if a scientist came up with something better than anabolic steroids? Now you're doing something that's pioneering, that's going outside of the norm. Everybody else is saying the world is flat. You're coming out and saying the world is, is, is round mm -hmm. and you're getting criticism for that. What about the safety? Um, Any safer or more damaging? Or? I'd say they're pretty safe. Usually this arm is like a half milligram capsule. Woohoo! <laughs> I feel like you're safer um, going with the SARM. Numerous people have asked me, Jason, what do you think about this whole Sarmageddon thing going on on Mark Bell's super training channel? And then when it went to the, the big channel with you know over 400,000 yeah, subscribers, yeah. people were like, who the, like, who's this guy? Like, what's this all about? Well, I think people hate on it too because it's popular. Like, you've done a yeah. good job with it. So, like, then people, they got to find something. I don't know. That's just like people do that. They got to mm -hmm. find something to be pissed off about. And this is the kind of shit that I'm talking about. By pointing out the fact that you are Mark Bell's producer and you're involved in his videos, it gives you an automatic amount of credibility. And Tran and, and SARMs in particular. And, and also think SARMs are safe, and, but they crash your cholesterol. So a lot of people are like, oh, SARMs are super suppressive. But if you actually read the entire clinical trial, it was about 5% suppression. He's got a lot stronger. He walks around like, he's getting like some size, right? I think it's helping his confidence a lot. I went from 181.4 pounds to 196.6. And it, it's like all the SARMs now, which is kind of the weird thing. And I just think that's probably bad coaching and athletes listening to a coach is telling them like, oh, they read an article on, on T Nation or something right. or whatever it might be off the online. Watch not to... Sarma get it. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That. Before we jump in, I would address the fact that Mark Bell and his team, including Andrew, do more for the sport than I will ever do. Most of us will ever do. They're doing this for information purposes so everyone can see what happens when you take these products and they're being transparent and honest about the effects. I mean, I don't know if you saw the the Sarmageddon series where that was run on Mark Bell's channel. Um, he reviewed his blood work at the very end of that and yeah, his testosterone had gone down. We were actually in LA at Gold's when I got the email of my labs that, that had come back and I start checking and I'm like, uh-oh. Like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna take more, more SARMs. This is the face of SARMs. <laughs> Ended up working up to a heavy single of 295 pounds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, buddy. Whew. Our baby's all grown up. <laughs> a disclaimer and a warning to anybody that's about to watch this video. The views and opinions in this video are just that, views and opinions. Everything you see is going to be done for research and entertainment purposes only. I do not advise nor condone the use of anything you're about to see in this video. Everything is just for entertainment purposes only. Whatever you do with the information you get from this video is all up to you. But ultimately, don't be stupid. Oh my gosh, is this, is, this is what it's like being on this side? I think so. This is terrifying. The other side of the camera? It's so hot over here. All these lights? Yeah. Well, normally I'm sitting in the back, all hidden like a cave. Mm. My back's all wet, sweaty, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, no. and the butt crack is real wet too now. Yeah, so it's funny. A handful of people ask me like, "Oh, like, what are you disappointed in, or what did you, you know, think was different about everything?" Man, I'm really concerned about butt sweat now. Mm -hmm. Like, it's bad. I'm wearing light colored shorts and. Mm -hmm. I look in the mirror, I'm like, my, I have a sweaty butt crack now. You were just less sweaty before. 100, yeah, because I was, remember I was always cold. Yeah, you just didn't have any, you didn't have as much body weight on Correct. You, as much muscle mass. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyways, obviously Mark doesn't need an introduction. This is his fucking channel. Mm -hmm. um, hey, hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, and so we could start there. Um, is this Sarmageddon? This is Sarmageddon, Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. How did we get here? I tricked you. I said we were podcasting. Oh, everything looks the same. Very similar. Oh. Yeah. I changed the lighting a little bit. Hmm. It yeah. feels different. That's good. I That's, can feel that. Yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, we can start there, though. Um, when I thought of documenting everything, I had originally wanted to just do audio because, mm. you know, we've been doing the podcast for a while at that point, and... I wanted something that I'd be able to stick to, something that I felt was easy, kind of low hanging fruit and just do like, like a audio blog basically. Right. And then uh, what happened when I came to you with that idea? 
well, you know, the biggest problem with audio is that you can't see anything, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so I thought, you know, documentation uh, doesn't normally happen through audio. It usually happens through like photography or video, mm -hmm. you know? And so I thought it'd be great to video it. And I think the audio side of things is kind of interesting because you can be like, um, you, you would, could be less reserved, you know, like if you just did like an iTunes thing, you could kind of talk or do anything. You could be sitting there in your underwear and it wouldn't make any difference. And you might just like, uh, might let loose a little bit more on the things that you say, but it's a lot harder to do it in front of a camera. Yeah. And so I thought like even kind of showing all that, like, sh like for people to see, uh, how reluctant you are towards trying certain things like, Oh, I'm going to try lifting heavy. Oh, I'm going to try some bodybuilding. It's not like we don't just try it. You know, you don't just try it out of nowhere. You think about it a lot and you're mm -hmm. like, Oh man, I don't know. Like I'm going to go work out with Tony huge. Like that's like, what's that going to Tony huge is pretty jacked. Like what's a workout with Tony huge going to look like, you know, you've trained with me and trained with O'Hearn and trained with some high level people and like in SEMA and stuff like that. And so you're probably thinking, man, like that might be really hard, but there's a lot of thought that goes into all of it, whether it's SARMs or steroids or any of these things. I think a great message from what you filmed is, is that like, don't just, don't just randomly try something. I mean, if it's like walking or fasting, it's like not a huge deal. Think about it a little bit and then start to do it. Right. Not a huge problem, but if you're thinking about, you know, sticking drugs in your body or doing something uh, with a, with a new supplement or something should probably be something you take your time with. Yeah. And on top of all that, like, uh, you know, putting yourself in like uncomfortable situations, also adding a camera to it to document it and like, oh man, I'm going to have to show people like how yeah. silly I look or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, it, uh, reason why I wanted to start out there because um, believe it or not, some people think that you don't have control of mm -hmm. your YouTube channel. The comments were right. saying, I can't believe this this guy has hijacked Mark's channel. He doesn't know what's going on. Um, so I wanted it, you know, well, actually just to thank you for, yeah. for not forcing me, but pushing me to, you know, really step outside of my comfort zone and start filming and documenting, mm -hmm. vlogging and putting it up on a gigantic channel for right. everyone to, you know, look at me, criticize me and whatnot. Well, I knew people would be, would gravitate towards it, you know, like when we started this podcast, um, there was a lot of like kind of figuring out there's like reshuffling. We had, you know, I had different uh, co-hosts before and then we moved on to like trying like me and Smokey with you, you know, helping. And then we tried like me, you and Smokey. And then we tried like me and you, and then we tried like me, you and guests. And we were playing around with a lot of it and we were moving forward and we making a lot of progress. And then we brought in like in SEMA and I remember kind of, you know, asking you like, Hey, I, I want to make sure that, like this is this is my show. It's called Mark Bell's, you know. But like, let I want let's make sure that you're good with it. I want you to feel good about it. I don't want you to be like, oh man, now I can't say anything. Or like, what value do I have? And the thing that's great about having you part of the show, in Seema's jacked, I'm jacked, and you're working on it. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, D a, a different perspective. But right? you're the you're the like working man. You're the mm -hmm. guy who's still working for it, and you are jacked, and you are in good shape. Um, but it's taking you some time. You've been lifting for like five, six years and then more consistently over the last two years, really been putting a lot of effort in and researching it and uh, trying to find answers, asking good questions and being around some uh, really great people. But each one of us provides a different value to the show. And I've, I've pointed this stuff out to you and for anybody out there who um, I think all we're ever trying to do, and it doesn't matter if it's Andrew or if it's me or if it's in SEMA, all anyone's ever really trying to do is just trying to be like significant. You know, you're trying to fig. you're really just trying to sounds kind of lame, but you're trying to figure out a way to like fit in. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants a hug. Everybody wants a pat on the back. Everyone would love to have a compliment. And I mean, it's part of the reason why you should try your best to be kind. It's not always easy to be kind 24 seven, but uh, do the best job you can smile at people, talk to people, ask people how they're doing, but really care, you mm -hmm. know, don't ask them how they're doing. And then, be off, you know, uh, talking about yourself right away, you know, let them finish their sentence, let, let them talk. But I think that that's ultimately what people are trying to do. So when you lift and you're trying to get bigger and you're trying to get stronger, you're just trying to matter. And I think maybe you don't recognize it. I think that you're thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to go after this. I'm going to get that. 
And when I get those bigger arms, I'm going to get the attention and appreciation from other people I'm looking for. <laughs> but really what you're searching for is to fix the guy in the mirror. You know, that's really what you're after. You're after like this guy that I see every day in the mirror. I'm not that happy with where we're at at the moment. I'd love to improve upon this. This looks cool. I'm pretty glad that we're, I'm, I'm super thankful that I'm healthy and that I can do all these things, but we're going to get after it and we're going to make some changes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we're, we've been training together for going on two years now. Oh my believe God. Believe it or not. Yeah. And in that time, let's see, I started probably when I was like 165 ish. Oh my God. And then eventually started training on, you know, and, you know, adding some weight. But by the time you and I got together and started working out, I was around 170. And in those two years, I gained about one, two pounds. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny, you know, people were like, well, how come Mark Bell isn't helping this poor guy? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, shit, he is. It's just been a little, yeah. little tricky for me. Well, there also wasn't like, we didn't say, hey, like, let's gain 10 pounds. Correct. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. We, that wasn't necessarily, although, I mean, we were trying different things. We tried a lot of different diets, but we weren't like, hey, let's really work on like bulking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? I mean, I think we were it's safe to say we were mainly going for like strength and then eventually with mm -hmm. the bodybuilding, we kind of went that direction. So like, uh, can you explain like kind of what our workouts really like look like or have been looking like for the past two years? Yeah. I should also point out, like, I think we're also just trying to maintain and, and keep a certain like look. So right. while gaining weight is great, um, I could have easily had you gain 15 pounds, but You'd have been like, hey, like, and we've done a little bit of that. And you've been like, ah, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm chubbing out a little bit. And <laughs> yeah. we, so they were like, fuck, well, we won't mess with that. And if that doesn't make you feel good, let's not mess with it. And then also you had a lot of digestion issues. It's been a thing for your whole life. So dumping a bunch more food into your diet doesn't seem like it's just going to make you sit on the toilet a lot more. Yeah. And so we just didn't really uh, mess with that. We were trying keto diet, bodybuilding diet, uh, vertical diet all different kinds of things. Carnivore. Carnivore. Yep. Yeah. This, the way that we work out, um, I would just consider it. And you hear everybody kind of say this, we do power building, you know, which is a combination of bodybuilding and powerlifting. We predominantly start out each workout with a main intent. Um, a lot of times, probably more recently, the main intent is like to pre exhaust, to try to make yourself kind of tired and fatigued. We've had many, many injuries with the group that we have. I think, you know, there's many reasons for that. You know, having a group of people to lift with is a huge blessing, but it can also t oftentimes be a big curse because we all are trying to, I don't know, we see like somebody lifts 315 and the next person just tries 315 because they don't want to put on 275 because mm -hmm. it takes time and it's, you know, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but, uh, you know, learning to stay in your lanes is, 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 uh, is really critical. But yeah, the way that we work out now is we try to have like a main intent of the day. The intent is either to lift heavy, to lift fast, to improve technique. Obviously we're always trying to have better technique, but some days like might be a sp specific speed day. Like we haven't even done one of those in a while, but focusing on speed and, and form and technique. Another day might just be hey, let's get in like five sets of five with the same weight. Let's control the weight. Let's make it look really good. Let's make it look pretty. And then let's move on. But almost in every single workout, there's like a primary lift. Um, it's kind of, if you want to think about it from like an Instagram standpoint, like, uh, you know, they used to say, ah, oh, that's, that's nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. People used to say, right. And that means like, you're not going to necessarily like stop what you're doing and like write a, write a letter to mom and dad. Uh, about how you watch TV, right? Like <laughs> you, you're going to write them a letter about how you met the president of the United States or something like that, right? From an Instagram standpoint, like that's the world that we're in, we're in now. And so we always want to have something that would be worthy of being filmed, you know? And so a, a one rep max squat or, um, you know, a set of 20 with something heavy or, you know, like just showing just showing a movement is like not enough. Just showing something has to be like more dynamic than that. So not that Instagram is like the main leader of our, of, of what we're doing, but we want something to write home about. We want something that's substantial. We want something that means something. And so an exercise, um, there's, there's a lot of different forms of that. We could have a superset or we could have a big collaboration of exercises. That's a conditioning. You guys see me post a lot of that stuff. Um, or it could just be, you know, 
uh, have set a heavy deadlift for a triple or something mm-hmm. like that, or something like this morning, just like an hour walk. Yeah, yeah. We just <laughs> went. We just went on, you know. And that's people get confused about like the early morning stuff, and they're just thinking, "Man, you're neglecting sleep, and what are you doing? You're waking up at three in the morning." And I don't wake up at three in the morning every day, but uh, most days I'm up between like three and like five almost every day. Today I woke up at, um, it was 4.11 and we were scheduled to walk at five, took a shower, got ready and we started walking. And it's like, why, why the walking? You know, normally Friday's a squat day. Well, I just figured we'll just squat tomorrow. You know, I'm just, it, we're able to audible. We're able to, you know, my legs are still sore from, I don't even know, Wednesday, Tuesday. I think it was Monday. Yeah, Maybe my, it was Tuesday. Yeah, my legs are still fried. Oh, no, because it's Labor Day, so it was Tuesday. Yeah. 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 I'm still super sore from that. So we're able to audible. We don't we're, we don't really follow, like, programming. I don't have, like, a program. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if somebody says, hey, I want to get this stronger, then we'll buckle down and we'll focus in a little bit more on that particular lift, just like we have for you with some benching and some deadlifting and, and even a squat. Um, but it's not like we do five sets of five one week and five sets of four the next and three sets of three the next. We don't really train that way. I think for most of us, I think that would be pretty boring. I don't think we want to do like the same exercise, right. use the same bar, like all that kind of stuff. So we use a wide variety of exercises. I would say it's all the way to the point where I don't think any two workouts have really ever been the same in the entire two years that we've been training together. No, no. And then, so you, you know, you've been the one coaching me. Um, when I started, you know, this cycle, what are your thoughts on the progress that I was able to make in, I mean, we started training about halfway through it. So in just a short span of a couple of weeks, like, what do you think? Before we jump into that part, I just want to say that like, it's been a lot of fun, you know, getting this training in with you. It's been super cool. And, um, just like learning, learning about somebody else is so is is exciting, you know, learning your mannerisms and learning. Um, like if I see something and this is just, this is just good stuff to do, uh, amongst friends, training partners, you see something in somebody and you give them a little, you know, it's like a lot of us can be sensitive. Um, but just hit your buddy, just fucking just hit, just give him a little flick on the shoulder and be like, dude, knock that off. (laughs) <laughs> don't, don't Andrew dude don't rub your shoulder in between sets is that does that really make your shoulder feel better like if you get up off the bench you know how your uncle would always throw you a bad pass and then they do that wind up with the <laughs> with the shoulder they're like oh man you know you know shoulder's not what it used to be should be able to chuck the ball 50 yards you know and they do that little that doesn't make the pass any better the pass still sucked yeah. you know you still threw it in the dirt right and kind of the same thing when you're training it's like let's Let's try to block out anything that is not going to be supportive towards what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's it's fun amongst friends to be like, dude, like my elbow, like that last workout, man, I don't know. It's kind of fun to do that. Like every, it's, it's human, you know, it's a human condition, right? We all do that. But let's maybe talk about it afterwards, you know, right. let's maybe say, Hey man, that shit really hurt the other day, you know? Yeah. And I'm so grateful the the way you approached me when that did happen, you were so nice about it <laughs> because now when I see other people doing it, it infuriates me. <laughs> so I can only imagine somebody that's, you know, been in the game for so long, had over a thousand pounds on your back, see yeah. me, you know, repping 135 <laughs> and being like, Oh, I don't know about today. And you're like, come on, man. I think we could all relate, right? Like if you were just to wake up out of bed and bench 225, it's going to hurt, man. Even if you're a 600 pound bencher, it's just not going to feel great. You're going to be like, ooh, like, (laughs) but the face that you make, is that really helping you with the extra, like, so you go to do a squat first thing in the morning and you know, you, you put a bar in your back and you squat. Is it going to do, do me any good to be like, oh, like just like dying with it, you know? (laughs) Um, and if that is the case, then maybe you would show up to the gym at a time that would allow you to warm up a little better. So you're heated up. So you feel better when you actually do the movement. But, you know, learn, I've learned so much from coaching you. I've learned a lot over the years from coaching a lot of people. Um, but I never really directly worked with somebody, uh, who was like newer, who had these desires to get stronger and to get bigger and stuff. And so, it's been really cool because I, I think in the past it's like I may have coached somebody, but like how long do I coach them for? I, 
you know, I've had a few training partners over the years where we power lifted together and did some stuff, but this is just different. Um, I could really focus in, like we have more people in the group now, so it's a little different, but if I saw you do 205 on, uh, like even like a deadlift, saw you deadlift 205 and it looked slow or looked awkward or something, I'd be like, nope, 185. Mm -hmm. And you would just be like, hmm. Like I could tell you're like kind of frustrated, but I was like, no, 185, let's do 185. Let's do it the right way. You're not going to get thrown in jail. You're not going to, you know, and I know you're not going to get hurt. Let's learn to do the movement the right way. So always going back. I have never seen it not pay off. Always going back, making sure you're doing the exercise the right way, the right range of motion, the correct tempo, the correct amount of control uh, always pays off. Right. You know, I, I guess you might be able to make an argument. There's been a few workouts where I did that to you so much that by the time we got to the top set, maybe you were a little fatigued, but it's just training. And then we could say, oh, you know what? I bet you could have benched that 215 uh, had we done it fresh, but you did 185 and 190 mm -hmm. and 195. Like we did all these small increments till we got there. But anybody listening to this, you know, that has desires to get better, um, take your time, man. Take your time, lower those weights and, and make sure that you're not, um, make sure you're not jumping. Like don't, don't just throw a quarter on. Like a lot of times you have a tendency to throw on a quarter and a plate because those are the natural progressions of throwing those weights on, but use the fives, use the two and a halfs. And if you're working out with somebody else, take the time that your, their weight is not your weight. There's nothing to do with your workout. Make sure you're getting in a really good workout. Now to answer your question. <laughs> Um, which was, you know, kind of tracking your progress and, and seeing your progress throughout this, uh, SARMS cycle. Um, I'll, I'll say again, you know, like this was not something that we were just like, ah, oh, SARMS are cool. <laughs> How long have you known about SARMS for? Uh, I mean, I knew of something, didn't really know mm -hmm. what a selective androgen receptor modulator was, mm -hmm. but I knew there were these oral things that you could take and they had steroid like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, effects. And I don't know if you remember, but maybe for like a year or so before actually, we met Huge. Um, yeah, yeah. So if you, were, I mean, hopefully you, you already knew Tony Huge a little bit too. A little, right? very little. Yeah, I met him at like a local MMA show, mm -hmm. and it, what was funny is I actually met him twice. Once with, I believe he told me his like wife, and then the next time he's like, "Oh, these are my girlfriends." And I remember I was like, okay, well, something's... You're like, I like this guy. Something's a little different about this guy. But yeah, we were at the uh, previous Super Training Gym location, and it was just you and I, I think I was just taking pictures or maybe filming something mm -hmm. for you, and I had asked you about these things called SARMs, mm -hmm. and you're like, meh, they're bullshit. Like, mm -hmm. don't even waste your time. Like, they nothing like that works. The only thing that works is, like, actual steroids. Right. So it had been since then that right. I knew of these things existing, but I didn't know anything about them. Right. But, and, and I think, you know, a, a huge thing to kind of consider. So what I've seen, like in terms of progress with the weights, I've seen, you know, 20, 30 pound jumps on, you know, deadlifts and 20, 30 pound jumps on squats. And I've seen you take, you know, things that you used to do for like one, I've seen you do them for like three or maybe even five, you know, I've seen some pretty, pretty big progress on stuff like that. But Everybody needs to think about this, you know, especially the people that are real negative towards it. They probably already stopped listening, right? But some of the people that are really wondering, like, why would you ever get into taking steroids or why would you ever get into taking SARMs? Doesn't make any sense. Think about if you can just take something that makes you feel better about yourself, like, how bitching is that? You know, how cool is that? Like, I think somebody that smokes pot every day, like someone who's a quote unquote pothead, they can no longer really justify, you know, why they, why they smoke so much. Right. All they know though, like all they would be able to really reference is like, I don't know, dude, mm -hmm. it just makes me feel better. You know, they could, they could say, Hey, it helps me sleep. Right. But these are all kind of like, we all know that those are kind of excuses, right? Yeah. Somebody could say it helps me the creativity and but we can all kind of agree. We can be like, okay, I, I understand. I see that. But really you have your drink at night because it makes you feel better. And then what is like, think about how crazy this is. What does feeling better do? Feeling better does fucking everything for you. It really does. Um, 
let's just say Andrew and I are single and we're at a bar. We have a couple, like we're at a bar. We see a couple girls and we're like, oh man, I think like, looks like those girls kind of looked over here. Like I ain't saying <laughs> nothing. Right. But then we have a drink or two. We feel better. We're laughing. We're having a good time. Oh, fuck it, dude. Let's just go see, you know, let's just go, let's just go talk to these chicks. Right. That's how empowering some, uh, something that makes you feel better is. Now a steroid doesn't, uh, or a SARM, um, as far as I know, there could be different research. I don't think it does any, if it does do anything to your brain, it's certainly not equal to, to that of alcohol. Um, there may be some small adjustments over time, but it, it's not going to all of a sudden out of nowhere, you know, give you that confidence to go talk to a girl or lower your, um, you know, it, it's not going to raise your self-esteem mm -hmm. up enough to where. Or like lower your ambitions. Yeah, lower your ambitions. Right. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to lower your ambitions to the point where you're just going to be like, F it. But over time it will. Mm hmm Andrew, take your shirt off. Let's have, you know, we're doing this photo shoot, like just flex. Eight months ago, you, mm, <laughs> nah, mm. yeah, there would have been no way. Eight months ago, mm, like, Mark, you're my boss, so fuck it. I'll do, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of be like, hey, man, like, we we do a lot for each other. So, yeah, I'll do, okay, I'll do whatever you say, but you're not pumped about it, right? Right, right. Whereas if I said now, you might be like, yeah, sure, dude, boom, double mm -hmm. bicep, and you're having fun with it, and you're not, a, not only are you doing a double bicep, but you're not frowning about it anymore. Yeah. Probably kind of smiling ear to ear, almost like, check these bitches out, like, I've been working hard on these things. Yeah, I was like, dude, I've been waiting for you to tell me to take my shirt off. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, there was the day that I we were- I take my pants off, too. Yeah, we were we were flexing, and I was just asking Mark, like, how do I, how do I, I'm like, you know what, hold on, <laughs> to rip my shirt off for the first time in the gym, and it'll just, like- Looking at it now, I'm like, oh shit, you're right. Yeah, I, I didn't think on, about it at the time. Working on working on some uh, working on some posing for a yeah. little bit there. Yeah, and then also like uh, the day that I hit 295 um, on the bench, I, I said it here on yeah uh, on Sarmageddon. I was just like, it didn't matter what was on the on the bar, I was gonna get it. Like yeah. I felt so in the zone. Um, being on Sarms, um, it was almost like every day was like today's a good day. You know, you walk in the gym, nothing hurts. Uh, that first like warm up set, you're like, oh, yep, it's, it's happening today. Mm -hmm. That happened almost every single time I stepped foot in the gym. You know, prior to that, right. it was like, ah, man, I don't know about today. And then other times it's like, oh, yeah, it's happening. But it was like once, what, like a month maybe? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you take, you know, a couple capsules and it's like, oh, it's happening again today. Yeah. So, yeah. You're getting PRs left and right. I mean, think about think about this too, right? So a girl with like fake bombs, right, with fake titties. She's not, so those are, those are artificial. That was a fast track to something, right? Fast track to attention, right? Mm -hmm. Is she actually really getting looked at or are those looks fake? <laughs> you know, she's actually getting looked at, right? Right. Uh, attention is, attention is going her way. Like that's actually happening. So when you bench 295, is it fake? You know what I mean? It's not fake. Like you actually did it. And so I think people are like, man, like, That'd be so much more satisfying for me if I if I knew that I did that naturally, I think I'd feel better about it. Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. You don't really know. Mm -hmm. And for you, you don't know, like you don't know. Now, when you benched, so I said 50 pounds and 30 pounds, but it's more like, <laughs> it was a lot more because yeah. it's more well, like 70 was, pounds. Yeah, that was with the uh, full bore slingshot. And oh, then, there but, you go. But without it, I still hit 245 or 240. Right. Yeah. Right. And then in uh, the slingshot meet, you did 203 or something, right? Uh, two, yeah. Two, yeah, yeah so what, I, guess, I don't know kilos, but yeah. Yeah. I guess some of those weights are probably accurate. 30, 40 pound jumps. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you kind of get the idea. It's like the 203 bench that you hit at the slingshot record breakers. Like that was monumental for a lot of reasons. Like you got on a platform, right? And I think in the gym, we might've had to hit like 215 or something like yeah. that. Um. And I think you may have missed 225 a couple times, right? But the strength was there to do it. And then you performed it on game day. You got on the platform and you benched over 200 pounds. You deadlifted over 300 pounds. And those were great. But I don't think, so even, so SARMs and Slingshot, benching 295 still probably felt cooler. It, it was incredible. It probably felt better, right? I, I, I wish I could put it into words, but you really can't. 
Yeah. I mean, well, I, I look at that, the, the footage of that video and like, I just, I shake my head. It's like, sometimes I, I, I wish I could remember it a little bit better, <laughs> but I remember you gave me a pep talk and like, yeah, it was over. Like yeah. uh, it was done. You know, like it, I knew it was going to go up. Uh, yeah. So that's, and, and then like, I mean, how many months ago was that? Three? Uh, probably like closer to two. Yeah. So it was two months ago. But let's say Andrew never goes on a SARM cycle again. Let's just hypothetically say you don't care about strength as much and you just never get back there. We know that you're going to do more at some other point, but let's just say even for the next two years, you'll never get back to that strength. You're still going to remember that day. Yeah. That, that memory is implanted. So it's like the SARMs helped you get that memory. The slingshot helped you get that memory. And it's like, is it any faker? Do you feel any less? You're not like, ah, uh, it's got a real, you know what? It's got an asterisk next to it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not like a, a dream I had and mm-hmm. I try to recall this dream to relive it. Like, no, actually, yeah, you're right. It was real. That was real weight. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you went through it. And, um, I think, you know, maybe that's a misconception I think sometimes about, man, isn't that a shortcut? Like, isn't doing that a shortcut? And it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it is. Thank you very much, because I would rather be more efficient and get places faster rather than slower. I mean, why do (laughs) why do people use an app on their phone? Why do people use Waze? Right. To get there a little bit quicker. (laughs) You know what? I want to I want to take the long cut. I want to go the long way. Right. No. Nobody says that. No, no. You want to. I mean. You know, people even have, like, there's even, like, a carpool. There's a a special lane that can help you go faster. So you bring someone with, like, I don't know, you can kind of get into all kinds of stuff and start to think about, you know, are these things, you know, uh, getting you somewhere faster than you should be? I, You know, I don't know. I don't know if anybody really knows the answer to that. I understand the moral hangups that people have. But as Louis Simmons pointed out in Bigger, Stronger, Faster, your morals are your morals. And my morals are my morals. You know, if I, if I choose to, um, if I choose to smoke pot every night because I want to go to sleep, um, or I choose to, let's just say, let's forget marijuana because it's pretty legal everywhere now. Let's just say I, 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 I take a prescription drug that's, that's not prescribed to me to go to sleep every night. And I, I personally feel that it makes me feel better. You might, might be like, dude, like, no, man, you can't do That's illegal. You shouldn't be doing that. Well, it's up to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know, same thing with speeding or like I cru- <laughs> I cruise through stop signs and I don't really pay that much attention to red lights. Like I kind of, I kind of go to the beat of my own drum. A lot of times I should get arrested for all kinds you of stuff. You always park in a no park, parking zone. <laughs> I park wherever I want. I remember the first time you did that. I was terrified. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like you're, you're going to get it. Ah, you'll be, I uh, will be fine. I don't really care about <laughs> tickets. Like, well, that's cool. Um, <laughs> when, uh, so the, when the first handful of episodes went up, I remember you called me and you're like, oh man, like, good job. Like everything's looking mm-hmm. pretty good. What do you think about like, uh, basically like, how it unfolded, like, uh, the reception that it got and like, you look over and it's like, oh my gosh, like the first three episodes have over a hundred thousand views. Like this is, this is weird. Like, what did you think? Uh, I thought it was, I thought it was great for a couple of reasons. Um, number one is like, it's great to like fulfill a category that maybe other people didn't know about, you know? So it's like who was talking about him, you know, and who, who was, everyone was curious about him. People would talk about him a little bit, but maybe some of the people that were talking about him were also like selling him, you know, or like with Tony huge, I know like you can't sell him here in the United States, but I think for a while you could. Right. And so I think people are like, well, he, he makes money that way. Mm-hmm. And then people see the nice things that he has and stuff. And they're like, oh, well, but this is just a guy just a guy who lifts that power lifts that, that body builds. That's like, I'm going to try, I'm going to try this stuff. And like, I'm going to actually see what it does. And not only am I going to see what it does, but I'm going to document it. And I think what was really cool about it is you turned it into like a legitimate vlog where there's a story. Like it sounds kind of funny to lay it out now, but like I'm, I'm this person here, you know, I, I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the podcast and I do photography in the gym as well. And you're going to follow along with me and the, some of the different stuff that I do. I'm going to share some personal experiences with you. 
I'm going to show you my lifting in the gym. I'm going to show you that, you know, I'm not quote unquote anything special. I'm just trying to be better and trying to be stronger. And, um, you came from being a smaller guy and you you want to be bigger. And then how many people are like, fuck yeah. Like I want to do, I want to do that. I want to be like that. Even somebody that is bigger, maybe somebody's fat and watching it. Like there, maybe somebody has always been big and they're, they're, they're big, muscular, and they're like fat and stuff. They could still understand the improvement. Like, oh man, I feel a lot like this guy. Like, I don't want to be bigger, but I, I understand. And it was very digestible for people. I think mm-hmm. people were like, oh yeah, yeah, I get it. I see what this guy's after. Yeah, I know. And it, it's so funny because, uh, I, I'll see people, I'll see comments, I'll even see videos of like, well, yeah, of course they work, like, duh. But at the same time, um, why, if it, so there's a couple of those comments. There's like 10 times more people saying, I didn't even know SARMs existed. Like, finally, somebody can like explain it to me to where it makes sense. And I always feel like that's a double-edged sword because I'm like, okay, cool. Now that you understand what SARMs are, don't go abusing it. And then, of course, uh, because of the show and of the series, I mean, laying out like what a safe dosage is versus what's not a safe dosage. Mm. I had people reaching out. Oh, my God. I had no idea I was taking like way too much. Mm. I'm just like, yeah, dude, like like all I'm trying to do is just document my experience, just show you, be transparent and everything. And also, I guess somewhere along the lines, I decided like, oh, my gosh, education is a huge part of all of this. Oh, yeah. No, people want it. They want to know. Yeah. They want to know. They want to know some answers. And then I think people are waiting. Like people are like, I want to see like if a dick grows out of his forehead. <laughs> Which I mean that thankfully you have enough money to get that surgery for me. Yeah. You're looking, <laughs> you're looking great now. You only have balls over your eyebrows. Yeah. We've got most. Who, who doesn't? Who <laughs> doesn't? <laughs> we, got, we, we got rid of uh, most of it. Yeah. And then uh, of course, you know, uh, I can't wrap this whole series up without talking about some of the comments. Um, when I first started. It was, oh, this guy's an idiot. Why are you going to do SARMs? Why don't you just do testosterone? Now that I'm doing testosterone, oh, what an idiot. You're doing SARMs, then testosterone? Oh, my gosh. So uh, I don't know if you paid attention to any of the negativity that the series got, but where do you think that stems from? No, you know what? When I saw the amount of views that you had, I was just like, I kind of like, <laughs> I just threw my pen up in the air. I, I kind of was like, oh, I'm so happy for him, but oh, my God. God, fuck. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> That's literally what I said. I said, fuck. And I was like walking down the street and I'm like, I'm just cursing. Like I have like Tourette's. I'm like, ah, shit. I'm like, I hope he doesn't get like, this is really hard. This is a hard place to be in. Like, it's so much fun, but it could be so difficult. You know, people just saying crazy, crazy shit. I mean, God forbid, but like your daughter can be in the background. Someone can make some nasty comment or say something. I mean, it's just like, that's not why I'm making these videos. I'm, I didn't, you know, and at the same time, it's like, Hey, anyone that makes videos, anybody that puts themselves on the front lines, they, they should be aware. Like you're on the front lines. You're, you're going to get torched, you know, you're going to get torched here and there. But sometimes the YouTube comments almost don't even seem fair. You're just like, that's, you're like, I can deal with that one. Cause that one kind of sounds true. I'm a cheater because I'm doing SARMs. That guy doesn't agree with SARMs. Not too bad, right? But then they say something really just like off color, off beat, and you're like, ah, I could have done without seeing that one, you know? Yeah. And, It'd and be really hurtful sometimes. Yeah, and it's it's funny. Like, so, you know, it's almost like a domino effect, right? Somebody says something kind of funny like that. I'm like, all right, good job, dude. Yeah. But then that, that like fuels the next guy to get it be a little bit more inflammatory. <laughs> and then the next guy, and it's like a domino effect, right? And so it just becomes a shouting contest of who can say the most outlandish shit possible. Right. And what, what's really like crazy is uh, YouTube has a filter. A lot of people don't understand that YouTube can- It does? <laughs> YouTube can see a comment and be like, like, oh, no, dude, like that's way too much. Mm. Like I've been called some of the most like homophobic and racial things s- multiple times. And I'm just like, wow, like how, why is this making you so upset? So at first I was like, nah, comments aren't going to like, that's not going to get to me. And then when I kept seeing a little bit more and more, I'm like, oh, wait, okay, yeah, I, I can't look at any of these comments. So I actually had uh, the media guys, Chris and Ryan, like, hey, um, I can't read the comments anymore. 
I'm like, so can you get in there and just like kind of give me a general idea mm-hmm. of what people are saying? Like, oh, sure thing. So like they would give me like the positive and the negative. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know what? I know you think that it's all negative. He's like, but you're actually helping a lot of people. Right. Like, there's some people that are like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for what you're doing. And that's how it's been on Instagram too. Like I, I get hit up every day by somebody thanking me or I get hit up by somebody with questions. Instagram's different because Instagram is people that are following you. Mm-hmm. They're less likely to see your video if they don't follow you. YouTube, it's like YouTube has an algorithm. I've been following, uh, I've been following USAPL lifters. I've been following lifters that get drug tested. I'm a huge uh, Bryce Lewis fan. I'm a huge fan of this guy and that guy and this girl because I know that they get tested for their contests. And it's my belief they do things, you know, in accordance with my beliefs, right? And then now I see this Sarmageddon thing. I'm like, what is this? And then I'm like, you're like, once you kind of say that, what is this? You're <laughs> it's kind of ready. over, yeah. Yeah, you're already ready to snub it. So you're like, I'm, I can't, one dumb thing that this guy says or one thing that's like incorrect or not factual or just... I'm going to torch him, yeah. you know, with a Lane Norton fact or like, right? or, or, you know, heaven forbid that like I misspeak. Yeah. Like, like, oh, I accidentally meant to say hormone instead of comp, like whatever it is. Yeah, you it's know? like, what school did you go to, dude? And you're like, like, hey, step in front of a camera and try doing this. Yeah. Say a few <laughs> thousand words from a camera. You're going to sound like an asshole most of the time. You're going to, you're going to really uh, mess up a lot of stuff. One thing I really liked about um, Sarmageddon was, is the fact that, and this is unique to you. And I think like picture, picture of somebody else did it, right? Picture if somebody else did the exact same thing, right? It's like, it really would have worked, only worked with you. Like there might be a few people that it would work with. We could pick, we could pick a few other people where you'd be like, oh yeah, I could see how it could kind of work with him. But like someone like Ryan Soper, he's too jacked, right? <laughs> yeah. Or someone like Insema, he's too jacked. People already know, like I do stuff. So it's like, what impact are SARMs going to have on me? They're not going to probably, well, I'm sure they give me like a little bit of a boost and people would have some curiosity. Um, but it's like, it's, I don't, and I don't think from my understanding, I don't think you're like a huge supplement guy. I think you've messed around with some supplements. You like uh, nootropics and stuff like that. But I haven't known you to come in and be like, hey man, I got this super pump, whatever. Like you're <laughs> beyond that part of your training already. Um and you might you just ask like, ah, oh, what about these aminos or whatever, you know? And it's, we, we all know like they don't really, right. They're not going to help you bench 70 more pounds. You know? <laughs> uh, we, we, we kind of have a good understanding of that. And so I think the fact that it's, that it's you and that you're inquisitive on the podcast and people got to know you from that. And now they're like, this is so cool. Cause this guy who has um, probably the most genuine form of questions on the show when it comes to like your, your questions, I always, I always laugh because I feel that a lot of my questions are structured. And of course there's plenty of selfish questions I ask in there. Most of my questions mm-hmm. are like for the fans. Right. I'm trying to break down what somebody's saying. I'm trying to like ketosis, like, what is that? Then Andrew <laughs> comes in and goes, just kind of curious, how would somebody use ketosis to get a little bigger and a little stronger? Yeah, yeah. Let's take, for instance, and somebody Seema, who's skinny and they've and been Seema's drinking. really bad that way, too. <laughs> well, Let's say somebody has a stomach that just doesn't agree with yeah. much of anything. It's all hypothetical. Yeah, my favorite is uh, Kyle Kingsbury. I'm like, just asking for a friend, but how would one go about getting DMT? I'm just curious, just not, you know, not for me, but you know, they'd be about six feet tall, about 180, you know, like just, but yeah, I mean, it's cause you know, we haven't been doing it as long as you and we're just not good yet. So we have to, like I, like I said, we got to hit base hits, right? You got to do what, what, do what works. And then eventually we'll be hitting grand slams like you too, but you know, until then, but yeah. yeah, no, I think that that's what everybody was excited about though, is like, they're excited and, and maybe we could come up with something else that you can kind of do that's. That's fun like that again, you know, yeah. so people can kind of follow along with, um, you know, with kind of a, a new journey, a new thing that you're, you're, uh, you're stepping into. But yeah, people love following that. I mean, a lot of times people are like, oh man, I can't believe Omar Isaf has so many followers or I can't believe Silent Mike has so many followers or I can't believe, you know, this guy or that girl. And it's like, well, dude, they're super relatable. It's like that person is, first of all, they're fun. They, Omar Isaf has a ton of energy on his YouTube videos. He's yeah. super fired up. He's super excited. 
Um, someone like Jeff Nippert gives you so much information. There's so many relatable things and other like bodybuilders or powerlifters and Jeff Nippert's pretty jacked, but other people are going to be like, he's not even that big, <laughs> you know? And it's like, well, he doesn't look like Pete Rubish, but he also is not talking about steroids all the time. Right. You know? it's, so these are natural athletes. And I, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's really, it's exciting. It's exciting to see, uh, somebody striving and going for something that's not Brian Shaw. I want to follow Brian Shaw. I want to see what Brian, I've never seen anyone like Brian Shaw, right? So I want to follow that journey. I want to see what Hap Thor Bjornsson's doing, but I also want to follow the guy where I'm like, that guy kind of looks like my neighbor. <laughs> like this guy's <laughs> going to try a 50 inch box jump. Like he might die, <laughs> you know, but yeah, if you, how's if he going to get down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's going to break his back just getting down. But you know that if, if, um, you know, some high level athlete, you know, it, most of these things are going to be pretty easy for them, you know? And so to see somebody do it and know that all of it's going to be hard, you know, for you to, uh, you know, get in front of the camera that way, <laughs> this is the worst, right? It was really hard. And, and back to the, like the whole shortcut thing. And I, I posted this, I think on my IG story, cause one day I came in, I was all frustrated. It was the day that I like scraped my shin up on uh, deadlifts mm -hmm. and it was just blood everywhere. But people were like, Oh, you're, you're taking a shortcut. You're taking the easy route. I'm like, okay, let's, let's double and almost triple my workload. And please tell me how that's taking it easy. You know, the easy route. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, no, like I was killing myself over here. And on top of that, yeah, I am the guy behind the camera. Right. So the added stress of jumping out in front of the camera it, it sucks. And then on top of that, when you mess something up, like when I interviewed uh, Kenny KO uh, and Tony Huge and all those guys, my microphone volume was way too low. Mm. Dude, I wanted to like, I, I was like, I was like, I give up. Like, this isn't for me. Obviously, I can't hang. But you're right. It's, it's, yeah, dude, it's, it's all so much added weight to what I was already doing. Yeah. I think some of those negative comments, you know, they come from, you know, people not being like mature maybe, um, but also they're not mature or sharp or keen to like the subject matter. And so they, it's foreign to them. They think it's dumb or they heard it's dumb or not great from someone else that they hold in high regard. And so therefore it's dumb. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard Stan Efforting say it's dumb. It's now dumb. Like it's just <laughs> not a smart move to do that. Like doesn't make any sense to do that. And it's interesting how we like the different dialogue we have towards stuff. So like Stan Efforting, now Stan Efforting is not going to say that cholesterol doesn't matter, but some people have pointed out how cholesterol, uh, it only matters under certain circumstances. It only matters if you have other markers uh, of your health compromised, like cholesterol is just like one, it's like one thing, right? And there's like good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. I don't know shit about cholesterol. I don't know. I'm just going to put that out there that I don't know much about it. But it's interesting that when people want to say that cholesterol doesn't matter, um, they they use it to their convenience. Kind of the way somebody might use like religion to their convenience. Like that's not the right thing to do. <laughs> but meanwhile, they do all this other shit. <laughs> that's not the right thing to yeah. do either. It's like it's just it's just when it's <clears throat> it's just when it's convenient. Sometimes people are whipping out these facts and like in that clip that you showed me where he said, you know, it's not good for your cholesterol. Well, steroids are awful. Steroids are terrible for your cholesterol. They are really, really bad. And then, but you might have someone say, look, and, and I, I know that Stan has said that cholesterol has been overblown. So he doesn't, hasn't said it doesn't matter. But in one sentence you're saying, you know, saying that it's been overblown. And as soon as we ask you about SARMs, that's the first place that you go, right? Like that doesn't really, mm -hmm that's not really adding up that well for me, you know? And so I think the truth is when it comes to SARMs, what do people know about it? Not much. Yeah. They just don't know that much. And when it comes to steroids too, um, somebody's like, Oh, you're just getting advice from like the dude at the gym. It's like, well, where else am I going to go? <laughs> the guy at the gym who's, you know, 255 and lean and looks awesome. Now look, there's also guys at the gym that don't look good. There's guys that are like purple and you're like, mm, I don't know about that. There's guys that are too heavy. There's guys that have edema in their legs. They're, they're holding on to a lot of water. Um, there's, a guys, there's guys who certainly look very unhealthy. They just kind of have this purple look to them all the time. And you're like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I've been there myself with taking you know, way too much shit in the past. So it's like, I think that people are just, they're searching out this information. They're seeking out this information because 
if most people had the opportunity to take a steroid, if a steroid was, was just a pill, and I know that some steroids are just a pill, then they would do them plain and simple. And I, and I think SARMs were kind of that gateway uh, into some of that. And unfortunately they made them illegal. So now it's, it's a weirder and harder thing to get a hold of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, in regards to, to Stan, um, I had reached out to have him look at my blood work, the, uh, the initial blood work before SARMs. And he's like, oh my gosh, you have the best labs I've ever seen. I was like, oh damn, well guess what? I'm going to uh, do SARMs. Like, do you want to get on camera and talk about it? And he's like, ooh, don't do SARMs. And I'm only saying this because, uh, you know, we do see, we have different opinions on SARMs, but everything he said that would happen to my blood work did happen. I wish he had come on camera to say it, mm. but he's such a good dude. I, I wanted to give him a shout out for that. And also because after he came like a month ago or whatever, we were talking about it. I was just like, hey man, this is what happened. And he just was like, you know what, man, we've all done some stupid things. He's like, you really don't know until you know. He's like, so don't feel bad about it. Just keep pushing. I was like, oh, thanks, dude. Like he's like a father figure, right? Right. Um, and I, people ask like, hey, like, you know, would you do it again? Do you regret it? Uh, I'm totally happy that I decided to do mm-hmm. SARMs. Um, I was able to, to, you know, add some size, add some strength, um, something that has taken me a really long time to do. And like, I have no regrets whatsoever. Uh, it, to me, it's one of the coolest things I've ever been a, been a part of. Uh, it's, I'm not going to say it's like my legacy or anything like that, but you know, I, I got my, when I first got hired, what did I say? I said, I wanted to leave my footprint on mm-hmm. this planet. This is part of that. Right. So I'm really, really happy that it all went down the way it did. And even with my blood work coming back a little, uh, you know, kind of messed up. And then my decision to, to do testosterone pellets, like, hey, dude, it's all part of the journey. It's all part of the experience. And I'm ecstatic with everything. So based on everything that has happened, um, has your like views or opinions or like uh, even if somebody was that you knew was like, hey, like I saw this Armageddon thing. Like, let's just say a lifter friend of yours, whoever. Uh, hey, man, do you think uh, SARMs would be a good idea for me? Hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, I usually discourage people from taking anything, mm-hmm. which sounds kind of funny. But most of the people that are asking me, I feel like they might be um, maybe looking in the wrong places, maybe a little too early in their training. And I, I don't think that you need to have like 10 years under your belt of training either. I think that you can you know, do stuff whenever you're ready. But the reason why I discourage it most of the time is because I say a a large majority percentage of the time, people have kind of already made their decision. Um, I had a really good friend of mine years ago ask me uh, a lot about steroids. He was really contemplating it. He was in a sport that doesn't allow it. And he was very religious. And I said, I said, absolutely not. I said, no, like he, like, how are you going to handle that with your wife? And he's like, well, I wouldn't tell her. I'm like, mm, can't do that. You know, like wh- what if your what if your wife, uh, you know, was sneaking alcohol like behind your back, like that wouldn't feel good. Like it doesn't really matter. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what it, what it is like alcohol is legal, you know, and it wouldn't matter that it's legal and it wouldn't matter. What would matter is that like, you're like that's weird. Mm-hmm. Like why are you know why why are, why are you, you sneaking hi- around? Yeah, why are you hiding this flask somewhere? And then like what else don't I know about? You know the other things I don't know about because that's that's not cool. So, and then also he has he has kids and stuff too. And I'm like uh, you know like I got needles in my house and I got steroids in my house and it's like uh, you know I don't love that. I don't like that part of it. I don't like the fact that my my kids have seen it. We've talked about it. You know it's like I this. I would rather that have not ever happened, but it's just, it's part of it. And I think that people don't think about that. They're thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to take these and they're going to make me bigger and stronger and I'm going to be better at my sport and stuff like that. But they're not thinking about all the other people that it impacts. Cause you think, oh, like I'm going to take this drug and it's, it's not like heroin or cocaine. It's not going to like heroin or, co- or cocaine can compromise you so much that it affects everybody else around you. Smoking a cigarette, it's very obvious how that impacts the people that are around you. You take a steroid and you're thinking, this isn't going to hurt anybody. And it, and it can. It can be hurtful to people that you don't explain it to. They find out, you know, through some other way. And they're like, oh, I didn't know about this. 
now there are like different circumstances, right? Every circumstance is different. You got something prescribed. It's a little different, right? And then, but man, like it's a, it's a very difficult thing to try to, uh, to try to explain and try to uncover. And really, um, again, if you just go back to that whole thing in the beginning, just trying to feel substantial. And then somebody might be like, man, you know what? That's really sad. You don't feel substantial without them. Hmm. It's like, well, maybe I don't. That's okay. You know, like, uh, people really struggle with depression and anxiety and like, luckily for me, I, I don't ever have any of those things, but maybe part of the reason why I don't have them is because I'm on steroids and I've been <laughs> on them since I was 25 years old. Like maybe they just make me feel, make me feel really good. You know, before, before I ever took them, you know, I, I was a pretty good athlete already. Like I ran a five, four forty, I benched two twenty five for 40 reps. I benched around 455. You know, I, I could move around good. I was explosive. I was pretty strong. I did a 635 deadlift. You know, like I, I was, I felt, I already felt good about myself, but if at any point that would have went downward and I like over the years, I got like worse and I got like fatter and <laughs> less <laughs> muscular and not as strong, then I bet you that I guarantee you, I would feel depressed and I would feel bad about myself and I, I wouldn't feel the way I feel today. Yeah. And that's another thing about like, so the, the, the serum I was taking, Osterita, it's been reported that like it gives you a, a good, like positive outlook, a good sense of well being. And when I pulled that out, um, remember how I said on the podcast, I'm like, I feel a little unbalanced. I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know if it was because of that, like a delayed reaction or something, but it's something else that people need to like really think about if they do deal with any kind of anxiety or depression. It's like you feel awesome when you're on, but eventually like that that roller coaster comes yeah. to an end and it's like uh you know yeah you do have to adjust a little bit and um you had mentioned something that made me think about like oh that's right it was um you know hiding from your significant other um thankfully my fiance was on board the entire time but i think it was because both of us were a little naive if we if she knew now back then right. whatever how that saying goes yeah it probably would have went a little bit different um, but she'd been more concerned maybe. Yeah. Yeah. She probably would have been like, Hey, don't take it for that long or, you know, don't do this and that. Um, a, a fan had asked me like, Hey, so what does your, you know, the wifey think about everything? She's, you know, kind of been, uh, she's been real happy about everything too. Obviously her, you know, her man's happy and getting jacked. So mm -hmm. she, she's been all for it. But yeah, if, if we had known back then what we know now, probably would have been a different story. Probably would have been a little bit more, uh, more hiding around and whatnot. Um, but yeah, dude, um, do you have any final thoughts on whole, like, whether it be SARMs or the whole series, uh, just the whole thing in general? Yeah, I think, um, you know, what you mentioned just right there, I think is really important is anyone that's considering something like this, you may have to consider the people that are around you. And if you're a kid, like kids, parents don't dig you hiding shit from them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not like you're going to be like, Hey mom, I need money for SARMs, but, um, that's not cool. Like you would wait until you're, you know, got your own spot or whatever to do that sort of thing. But also, you know, what Andrew said about like coming off, like that's a really, really important thing. You come off a steroid or you come off a SARM, uh, it'll have a, a huge physical impact on you. Physically, you may look different. You may feel different different in terms of like your strength levels, in terms of what you can perform in the gym, your performance may drop, your strength may drop. You may go in the gym and bang on 225 for sets of eight all day while you're on them. And then maybe you're off of them and three reps is hard and the arms are shaking and you're like, oh no. And so you have to, uh, you have to have a game plan in your head. If I am to go off of these and that's something to be aware of too, like you're just going to stay on them the rest of your life. And what's that going to look like? That's not really the best, that's not really a great option, but you know, for some people it is, I've been on them for a long time and I just change up how, you know, the dosages and things that I'm on and, and things like that. And right now I'm messing around with a, with a cream and so far so good with that. I don't know, you know, <laughs> how, how that will, how that'll work out like over time, but feeling good and working good for now. Um, but you do have to really think about coming off and, and what will that look like? What's the game plan then? Because you can become really depressed. Even somebody like myself who hasn't even going through like 
my brother's death and, you know, having a bunch of different things happen over the years that kind of suck. I've never really sat around and felt sorry for myself or never really was super, um, like never sad for like days on end or felt real like melancholy or anything like that. But when I came off of steroids to have my daughter Quinn, uh, there was like a few weeks there that were really hard. Cause I just, you know, I, I, I didn't know I was going to feel that way. I was like, man, I didn't, I'm like, I do not feel good. Like, what is this? This is really weird. And I was like, oh shit, this is like, this must be like depression. Like I just didn't feel like doing anything. Um, but you know, if you're someone that struggles with motivation, you, you have a hard time kind of, uh, turn the corner on some things. I think steroids can help. They can assist. But as Andrew knows, <laughs> it doesn't matter what you take. Sometimes you still might not show up places on time. <laughs> at, at least 15 minutes late, sometimes more. Yeah. It's, but <laughs> however, sometimes taking that leap into saying, I'm now doing this, it can send a cascade of disciplines down the line. So if you're like, I'm now waking up at 4 a.m., well, then that makes you go to bed earlier, right? If you say, I'm now doing SARMs, it, it sends a cascade of disciplines down the line. I'm doing SARMs. I'm eating a gram of protein per pound of body weight, guaranteed. I'm eating some carbs before and after the training sessions. It's my goal to get bigger. I'm going to make sure I'm getting proper sleep. I'm going to make sure I get proper nutrition. I'm going to make sure I have proper hydration, and I'm going to do it as best as I possibly can handle for as long as I can possibly handle, right? So that's, that's the thing to kind of recognize is like, if you're on the bubble and you're thinking about doing them, usually it already means that you made up your mind, uh, to actually do them, but keep investigating, keep poking around, keep looking and, uh, see what makes sense for you. Um, I'm not going to tell you whether to do them or not to do them. It's, it's up to each individual person. I personally have had a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of good things happen to me from taken steroids. However, I would also say that I don't know, I, I don't truly know what it's done or what it, you know, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know if my longevity is compromised a and I would never know that even if I was to die right here on this, this set right now, oh, no. everyone would link it to steroids, mm -hmm. but we really wouldn't, we probably wouldn't really know. I guess if it was like my heart was to stop, then we could say, Hey, look, you know, he was probably on a lot of shit for a pretty long time. Uh, but for the most part, even if, you know, say I die at 70, they're like, Oh man, he could live to 75. It's like, you'll never really know. Andrew will never really know if it, if it shaved a year off or if it added a year, we don't, we don't have any idea. Maybe, maybe you adding a little bit of muscle mass, you know, having more muscle mass as you get older is not a negative thing. So uh, I thought the series was really cool. You know, I hope people really learned a lot of, from it. I, and I hope that people, people that were mean and threw out rude comments and that were upset and stuff like that about A, B, C, or D, uh, hopefully they understand the kind of person that you are. And hopefully they just understand that, like, you're not trying to hurt anybody. You're not trying to insult anybody. You're not, you know, you're not trying to maliciously or intent, have any intent towards harming anybody. You're just trying to put out some content uh, th that you share with people and then maybe they can make a more educated decision on what it is they want to do. Yeah, I think, yeah, the thing I'm really most happy about is I just shed some light on something that no one else was able to do. Um, you know, even just like alternatives, right? Like an alternative to testosterone. Like nobody knew, really knew anything about uh, the BHRT pellets that I'm on now. Mm -hmm. It's just like another thing. And, you know, it's just like I said, just bringing some things that are a little dark, add some light to them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I loved everything about it. There were some dark times where I'm like, dude, I don't want to film. I don't want to edit. Um, you know, you and I spoke about like the, uh, some of my other uh, aspects of my job. And, you know, it's like, hey, like, let's step up here. You know, let's start making more power bites. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, I don't know if I can do all this. And then sure enough, got it all done. So now it's like, shit, there's nothing I can't do now. You know, so thank you for that. And of course, thank you for supporting me throughout this whole thing. You know, without you and Andy being like, okay, this guy's going to do what now? He's going to do it at our gym under, you know, with our company attached to it. Right. Like that, that's a risk in itself. So mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for that. Like yeah, no really, problem. I appreciate that. Of course, thank Tony Huge. Uh, everyone's like, where did you, where do you buy your SARMs? I'm like, 
dude, I, I don't know. I don't buy them. <laughs> How much does it cost? Like, dude, I've literally never paid for a SARM before in my life. Right. So, and I, oh, he's got, you know, it's it's benefiting him more than it is you, blah, blah, blah. The guy didn't have to do anything. And he, he still stepped up. I can text him right now and ask him like, hey, can I get some whatever? And he'd be like, he'll be here in like 10 minutes. Like, he's just <laughs> a good dude. Um, Tony real, Huge is awesome. Yeah. I can verify that. You might think weird things of him because his shirts look like they're painted on, but, uh, he does wear some, he does wear some tight clothes. He's definitely different. I mean, he'd be the first guy to admit that to you, but man, he is insanely intelligent and, uh, he's insanely kind. He's just a, he's just a very, very nice person. Yeah. And then just real quick, uh, thank you, Ryan Soper, Chris Griffin, uh, Soper and Chris, there are the rest of our media team. They hooked it up with a couple of, uh, you know, training footage and stuff. Um, Chris made the uh, the cool Starmageddon graphics. I can't do that stuff. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a savage when it comes to that. So thanks, dude. Um, and just literally everybody for watching, everyone that gave the videos a thumbs up, everyone that followed me on Instagram, everyone that reached out. Um, yeah, dude, it, it's been it's been a fun ride. And, you know, you guys can follow me at I am Andrew Z on Instagram. I'm going to continue to do other experiments. I can't say if I'm going to do more SARMs and whatnot, but, you know, there's always a possibility. Uh, there's some stuff I'm, you know, talking to Tony about. The Sarmageddon name will live on. It This series, however it will be, this is it. You know, this is this is the end. Um, have some, like, uh, some experience with nootropics coming up. And, you know, who knows, who knows where this road's going to lead. But again, Mark, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. If there's anything else you want to add, right now is the time. If not, we can get the hell out of here. I'm all good. All right, cool. Thanks again, man. Thank you. Peace. Bye.